every time we see a situation, we choose how to look at it. You can look at it as a problem or you can look at it as an opportunity. So I choose to look at this as an opportunity to help us evolve and adapt into this new way of thinking about our workforce. So um, what I thought we should do for the institutions that I support is, let's just understand first why even people will wake up in the morning, get in their car and drive and show up at our door to work for us. What motivates them? What's in it for them? Um, and then the second thing um, that I think we should talk about today is uh, how that why changed after the pandemic. Because we can ignore that the pandemic actually flipped a lot of things totally on their head, right? So um, because I'm a data scientist, I will take a little bit of a detour to tell you how I think data science can help us a little bit address these problems today and where I see business value show up with the maturity in the organization. So the very first fundamental step for analytics is, of course, data. Data adds value when it becomes information. And the way data becomes information is by addressing business questions through a process and giving context to it. So the more you interrogate the data, the more it speaks to you and then it becomes knowledge. When you let go of that control and you, you let the trends drive the conversation and it becomes analytics driven demand, then you've reached that ultimate state of intelligence. And we did a huge study and basically we found out that fundamentally, regardless of everything else, when you distilled it to the, the purest, simplest truth, people show up to work for three reasons. One is they want a job because that's how they get currency to leave. I give you labor, you give me money, that's our contract. Then there is another group of people that they are actually looking for a career. And the difference with this group is actually that, that they're thinking for something longer term. So they're making these trade-offs and, and they're willing to work with you and they also start being more interested in longer term incentives. So like 401ks or like what else can you give me that's not like the here and now base pay. And that usually these are the people in an organization that are the culture keepers. They're very passionate because they have this long-term view to the success of the organization. And then there is a third group of people, and we find this not so much in corporate, but we find this in, in parts of corporate that have um, more kind of institutional flavor, but we also see that in academia and we also see that in, in um, healthcare, is the, the ones that seek excellence in their profession. So a pharmacist, for example, when I was at Walmart, would be considered a professional. A pharmacist would never go around a distribution center like somebody who's seeking a career would, but they would want to be the best pharmacist there is. So these are kind of the big three buckets that I identified. Now that brings me to my next uh, point, what changed after the pandemic? So the big thing that changed after the pandemic is the proportions changed a lot. And now the companies, they don't have the same pools of candidates under each one and they're struggling. One of the big changes is that people who were in careers before, they actually shifted in that job bucket. And the big challenge now, I think it's gonna be, now that we're out of the pandemic, we as employers, um, we, we say, okay, everybody, let's go back to where we were, but but those experiences are here to stay and so we have to adapt to it.